We're ready for our third session. Our third session is called Trade Wars, No Long-Term Winners. And the topic is self-explanatory. And it's something that I, I believe each one of us relates to. So let's do a little show of hands. Raise your hand if you're paying more for fuel or gas than you were last year. Wonderful. Look at this. Now raise your hands if, you're, if cooking oil, essential commodities have also become more expensive in your country than they were last year. Very good number. Just look at the number of hands around you. This is how widely trade wars impact us, all of us, no matter where we live in. A trade war anywhere is a threat to supply chains everywhere. Same with sanctions. There's an urgency to try and find solutions for what we're calling unconventional warfare, trade wars. And that's what we shall do in this session. Allow me to invite Mr. Dimitro Senik to open the session. Mr. Senik is the Deputy Foreign Minister of Ukraine, joining us all the way from Kiev. He is Ukraine's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. He has served as Ukraine's Ambassador to Singapore, Brunei and New Zealand. Please welcome our keynote speaker, Dmitro Senik. Thank you for inviting me to address such a distinguished audience. Let me start by offering my sincere condolences to the people of the United Arab Emirates on the demise of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nagayan who is highly respected by the international community for his devotion and contribution to promoting peace and prosperity in the UAE and the region, as well as for strengthening the UAE role as the regional leader. Ladies and gentlemen, I am grateful for this opportunity to address the Global Summit. Journalists from the YNUs were among the first to visit Ukraine on the eve of the Russian aggression and stayed there during the most difficult days of the Russian aggression. I would like to thank Ms. Palke Sharma Opadhaya for her courage demonstrated in Ukraine in those tragic days. Indeed, the world changed after February 24th, when Russia started its war against Ukraine. Ukrainians suffered the horror of the Russian occupation. The unprovoked Russian aggression took the lives of thousands of thousands of civilians more than 220 children killed and more than 420 children injured. About 10 million civilians had to leave their homes to seek a safer place. More than 1 million Ukrainians, including thousands of Ukrainian children, were forcefully transferred to Russia. Being incapable of defeating Ukrainian armed forces, Russian soldiers fight with civilian population, killing innocent people and looting while failing to occupy Kyiv and other major cities, Russia destroyed thousands of Ukrainian hospitals, educational institutions, theaters, road infrastructure, residential housing. More than 2,000 missiles were fired to destroy civilian infrastructure. Suffering, devastation, scorched earth. This is what Russia soldiers leave on the occupied territories. These are war crimes committed by the Russian Federation. At the same time, in an attempt to cover its crimes, Russia spreads disinformation and delivers fake news. However, the truth is that Russia started the biggest war in Europe since the World War II. By defending itself, Ukraine defends entire Europe. Furthermore, Ukraine defends those principles enshrined in the UN Charter and respected by every responsible member of the international community. So, why the ramifications of Russia's aggression are so important to the international community? The Russian unprovoked aggression against Ukraine will undoubtedly have grave consequences for the entire international system. For the first time, since the end of the World War II, we witness unspeakable atrocities and brutality committed by Russia, the country 
that sits as a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council and was expected to be a peace guarantor, not a wrecker of the global security architecture. Secondly, according to the IMF, the global economic recovery will slow down significantly due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The IMF not only downgraded gross prospects in Europe, but warned that countries around the world will be affected by the disruption to commodities markets as a result of the Russian war. Thirdly, Russian aggression would cause serious problems for global food security. In total, Ukraine as a global food security contributor feeds about 400 million people around the world. Ukrainian grain, corn and sunflower oil are traditionally supplied to Europe, North Africa and the Middle East, as well as Asia. The looting of Ukrainian grain by Russian troops, blockade of shipments of grain and other food supplies from Ukrainian ports, as well as mining of shipping routes endangers global food security. According to the UN, Russia's invaders blocked almost 4.5 million tons of grain in Ukrainian ports and ships. Russia continues to intentionally block sowing campaign in Ukraine by destroying agricultural machinery and stocks. Despite all the hardships we face, Ukraine is committed to its obligations and remains a trustworthy supplier of agricultural goods to various regions of the world. Ukraine is working intensively with partners to export its agricultural goods through alternative routes. Ladies and gentlemen, what kind of world order do we all want to have? What principles and rules do we adhere to? Should we live in the world where the might is right? We live in the 21st century. The century of scientific progress, rethinking and evaluating our common future and destiny. The century where nations should compete in the areas of innovations, new ideas to improve well-being of people, especially in the most vulnerable groups of society. Let me offer you a picture of the future, how I would imagine it. It is actually very close to those of you who are currently in Dubai. I'm talking about Dubai Expo 2020, a remarkable success story of the United Arab Emirates that has won hearts and minds of millions of people around the globe. Expo 2020 inspired and prompted the international community to address the world's most critical challenges and opportunities, to bring the world together. Three words, sustainability, mobility, opportunity. This is what our shared future should look like, offering opportunities, but not depriving people of lives, homes and their dreams. Competition of new ideas and solutions to improve lives, but not violence, hunger and poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening in Ukraine is critical for our shared future. It is white and black. There is no gray area or neutrality between the good and the evil. That is why every member of the international community should speak up against Russian aggression and condemn the atrocities and war crimes committed by Russia. We strongly believe that Ukraine will win. The international order will prevail. After we win, we will rebuild and restore everything that Russia destroyed. We will build new Ukraine. In cooperation with prominent international experts, the Ukrainian government is already developing a recovery plan. The main principle of this plan is that we are building with Europe and the world, rebuilding the whole country. And we invite our international partners and friends to take a lead in rebuilding Ukraine together. President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, launched a global initiative, United24, that is designed to support our country, where everyone can donate funds and participate in rebuilding our country. So let me take this opportunity to invite you to join the global efforts of supporting Ukraine, supporting peace and ensuring that our planet is a safe place to live. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish everyone a fruitful discussion.